Hey guys, welcome back to Fort Mort. We are back for another modding video. I apologize for missing last week, but it was my birthday, so I partied a little bit too hard. But to party a little bit softer, a little bit politer, I brought a special guest today, right here. I've got the man himself, Solo Base, to talk about how to mod Ray Jedi Training. How are you, brother? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent. So honored to have you, the other half of the Gambit podcast hanging here. <laughs> They've had me on as a guest a couple of times. Great show. Good smarts. You guys aren't paying attention to this. This I love to do the characters, and I was talking to Solo about this, that people have access to mid to early game. So, and how many times you look at 200 characters? How do I mod this guy? How do I mod that guy? I don't know what to do. Today, you're going to know how to mod Ray Jedi training. All right, guys. One last thing I'm going to say. I'm going to have all of Solo's information down below, and I'm also going to have this up here i don't say it up here because youtube doesn't like to hear that in the algorithm you can find that guy well i guess it's this guy over there at the gambit gambit podcast or at his channel at solo base so i will have all those down below let's kick it off brother all right let's talk about ray who so here's the thing about ray everybody says that her kit isn't that great but she is a monster if you she use her right um and the nice thing about her is you can really use her with any resistance. Um, you know, right now I have the big, <laughs> my account's absurdly large, sitting at like 7.7 .7 million, and I'm still using her every single GAC. Um, I unlocked her, and I, I was probably in Division 2 when I unlocked her, and I used her every single GAC. So she is, uh, she's going to last. I gear her up and she will last and she's going to punch up. So, uh, and you have two accounts, right? Two big accounts, I do. if I'm not mistaken. I do. Yeah. Uh, my other one's 7 million. Yeah. 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 Much yeah. smaller, That's, much, much smaller than the other one. Much smaller. It's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, here's the thing about Ray. Uh, you know, like you said, we're, we're going to focus on one character, but Ray's modding fully depends on her dear friend BB8. Yep. Um, and what I mean by that is BB-8 is going to give her 16% turn meter. The whole goal of the team is BB-8 does a wiggle, and the very next character to go is Ray. Um, because you want to give her the turn, and then she does her little hand wave, steals turn meter, ability blocks, whatever it is she wants to do on that first turn, and then she gets going. Uh, so... First thing you have to worry about, Ray, is speed. For the longest, and I mean longest time, I ran an actual speed set on her. Um, now, so I've grown my mods. Better, right? I've grown my mods, and so I, I, yeah. I have uh, better secondary supports. I don't need her speed. I, I don't need a speed set for her, but yeah. most people, especially in the early game, um, you're going to want to run a speed set on her because you're running a speed set on BB-8. Because the idea is... BB-8 gets a ton of turn meter from having R2 on the field, and then BB-8 gives a ton of turn meter to Jedi Training Ray, and that team just, I mean, it outruns basically any team in the game. Um, fastest Moff Gideon in the game, my Ray will go before. <laughs> uh, fastest Darth Revan in the game, my wow. Ray will go before. It's wow. all the turn, and it, it's not its not that hard. So, uh, bb 8 giving 16% turn meter to Ray. Because what happens is on Ray's unique, whenever an ally gets uh, secret intel, which is the buff that BB-8 gives out, Ray is gonna give out or gain 8% turn meter. So BB-8's first wiggle, BB-8 gets secret intel, partner gets secret intel, and that means Ray on the first BB-8 wiggle is gaining 16% turn meter. Um, this now, is why they're coming at you so fast and furious. That's that's exactly why. Yeah. Um, and that's that's how that's how Ray wins team. So let before we talk about the modding, let's talk about why or what team she beats because uh, a lot of people use her for you know like first order or bounty hunters right. or typical. Yeah, it, those are the standard teams. Yeah. If you mod this team right, I'm beating Darth Revan with her. I'm beating Padme with her. Um, 
I beat Treya with her, and technically no Treya beat beat the uh, JTR meta. That's what sent her packing. You do it right, and you can beat almost any team on the board. In fact, she's used to clean up most Galactic Legends as well, if there's a solo Galactic Legend. So this is going to be your all-star. She is a beast, and she can hit hard, too. She is, and I mean, you can... You can tell people, you know, mine's R7 at this point and has been maxed out since the day I got her. Uh, you can tell people, though, that what yours was gear nine for the longest time, beating gear 12s yeah. left and right. Yeah, mine's <laughs> still mine's still pretty pathetic. She's uh, yeah. she's 11 with only one Zeta, which I want to get into here shortly also. Yes, and I will yell at you for that in a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, to understand what the team does um you have to kind of talk about the one zeta so that's actually probably <laughs> probably the best transition to that leadership zeta yeah. um because this leadership zeta is where this team runs um and it's for those of you that don't know the lead zeta is when a resistance ally uses a special ability all exposed enemies lose five percent turn meter they can't resist that they can't you know there's no evading that debuff. Um, and uh, when the resistance ally uses a special ability, not only are they stealing the turn meter, if they're not debuffed, they're reducing their cooldowns by one. <laughs> so whatever the resistance cooldowns are, you know, they're being reduced. That basically means Ray is going to constantly be hand waving. She's going to be constantly applying healing immunity, which is the key to most of the counters. Especially um, KRU, yeah. Oh, KRU. Uh, for the longest time, if Barris, if I knew my opponent had a Zeta Barris, I just saved my JTR and it was the automatic counter. Because nice. if you have Zeta Barris, there's no there's no offense on the other team, and you apply the healing immunity, and you're doing exposed damage, and you just chew right through them. Nice. Um, yeah. Now the other thing about the lead. So not only do you have you know. The, the turn meter portion of this, but when she scores a critical hit, she, uh, anybody, when anybody on the team scores a critical hit, they uh, apply expose. And that's how you get the team exposed. That's how you team. Which in turn is getting more turn meter because every time they're exposed. See, I'm learning a lot right, right. here because I never paid attention <laughs> to Ray. Ray was one of the yeah. last characters I got. Yeah, she's, uh, she's like that for everyone. Because everyone's like, oh, she's not that good until yeah. you start learning why she's so fast. Um, you needed her for the Sith raid so bad back in the day, and I wasn't even in that place. I'm a late bloomer. Right. Yeah, oh God, Sith raid. I mean, she still owns P1. I mean, yeah. I know Kylo can solo right. the Sith raid. Right. Uh, at, at this point on auto, my resistance team can get 25% of P1. Yeah. You just, I, you have to manually apply that stupid shield when Nihilus is about to annihilate yeah. somebody. Yeah. But other than that, you, you click auto and resistance is just gonna yeah. they're gonna run um all right so now that we know what the lead ability is how do you mod her? mod her right yep you're modding her for a couple things um she applies expose on crit chance which means you want her crit chance high okay the the other thing is her lead gives 30 percent crit chance so when you're modding ray and all resistance on the team really you want their crit chance at 70 percent like that's that is the number one stat. We talked about speed. To get you to 100%. It's, yeah. Right. You want to be at 100%. That way, every single hit, you're landing exposed. And here, that's how they do damage. Like, <laughs> in 3v3, it's JTR, BB-8, and R2. And you're like, how the hell are they doing damage? Yeah. <laughs> every expose is 20% max health damage. Mm -hmm. if you go against somebody that has a high health pool, every expose is doing massive like, damage uh, yeah 20k damage just yeah. on an expose and you're yeah. that you just chew through them because uh, it's percentage base yeah right especially those boss teams that you you know they have this high defense and defense doesn't matter when you're doing max health damage it doesn't matter how much armor you have stacked on a character it's just oh there's your health pool there it went um so number one thing about modding ray is get her crit chance up to 70 percent now I do that personally with a crit chance set. You know, just one of your offset. So you have a speed set and then you have the offset. Yep. The offset, 
put his crit chance. Um, other option is you can do a crit chance triangle. We're going to talk in a little bit why that's probably not the best idea, but if if you have to, to get her to 70%, put the crit chance triangle on, because that's before anything else, you, you want the exposes dropping um, yep. on that team. Now, the second kind of secondary stat you want to worry about is potency, because when JTR does the little hand wave, you know, she's removing turn meter from somebody. She's also applying daze and ability block. Uh, she's applying offense down and speed down. So she's got four debuffs on her opening move because it's BB-8 wiggle, JTR hand wave. Um, and a lot of the counters, a lot of the teams, you need especially that ability block to apply. Um, right. Ability block or daze because I, I used to use her against Dooku. All, I still use her against Dooku all the time. And you want to, you know, just do a little hand wave and Dooku doesn't count her and, you know, you go to town. Um, so, potency, another good secondary stat. Um, for the longest time, I ran her with a potency cross um, to get her potency up. Because her base potency isn't, it's honestly, it's not the greatest. Um, I think it's at 36%. So yep. if, given that cross, another 24%, get her up to 60% potency. Um, and that, that really helps on that opening that opening hand wave. Yeah, I got uh, some work to do. <laughs> God, damn. Uh, a lot of people don't, you know, the biggest crime I see. Um, the and more I guess you talk because, about it, the more it makes sense. And this is why I yeah. love doing this. Yeah, uh, the, the biggest crime I see, and it, it's because of the Sith Raid. I know it's because it's Sith Raid, and people are trying to squeeze out all the damage they can on the Sith Raid. Is I see so many crit damage sets on JTR. Cause they hear, oh, her crit, you know, her crit chance needs to be 100. Yep. We're going to be critting all the time. Let's let's use a crit damage set. Yep. Uh, I don't think you want to do that. Yeah. But that's that's not where that damage is coming from, even in the Sith Raid. Um, but. So, don't don't crit damage set her. Um, unless that's what you need to get her up to the speedy one. Then that's I guess. exactly what I had to do. I had right. to do the crit chance, crit yeah. damage, because I, I got her to 234 is what I had on her. Because, I'm yeah. like I said, she's one of my late bloomers. But, yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, yeah. It, it's So, now, here's, here's the thing about this team. For JTR with just any random resistance, pick a, pick a resistance... You know, she's going to beat the KRUs, the the, the uh, Bosks, the Separatist teams. Um, what you really want to start doing as, as you evolve, because, you know, when you first get her, you're not going to have a full resistance team. Most people right. just kind of ignore resistance right now. Right. Um, but as they start developing their rosters, you, you start to play in with the resistance hero bros. Um, once you add them to the team, that's when you can start taking out Darth Revan. That's when you can start taking out uh, certain Padme teams. Um, that's when you take out the Treya teams. And that's when JTR's, uh, her modding is going to change a little bit. And if you look at my JTR now, it's, I, I like I said, I took off the speed set and she's got a crit chance set, a potency set, because you need to hit hit those numbers on those um, on those stats but resistance hero Finn when he throws the grenade yep. uh, he, he's going to mis make a tank taunt and here's the thing JTR is a tank she right. doesn't have a taunt with foresight nope. right she, well she's a, an evasion tank yep. so the more the more relics you start putting on her the more evasion she gets and mm -hmm. good lord <laughs> she'll I don't know if you've ever seen the P2 video of the Sith Raid where JTR can't be killed. No. Scion just can't. <laughs> Scion just cannot kill her. And uh, the problem is she can't kill Scion. It takes like five hours for her to kill Scion. So by the time wow. she does, the raid's over and you don't get rewards. But it's it's a funny video to watch. Wow. Uh, but that, that happens when you run her under a Galactic Legend Ray too, because Ray increases her mastery and, you know, uh, she she gets 100% evasion, basically. Uh, but 
<laughs> away, going away from the side tangent there. Um, JTR is going to taunt when you have resistance hero Finn. You need a resistance hero Finn to counter the big teams. That means when you're going up against the big teams, you want JTR to survive. Yeah. So currently, I have protection circle, protection cross, protection triangle, and then I get my potency and crit chance from you know the actual set values because um, she's once she's taunting, she she gets foresight, she has evasion, she's going to get hit. Like there's not a question, she's she's going to start to get hit every once in a while. Oh yeah. And, you need so once you get the purse bros on that team, your modding priorities change, and she becomes okay. Keep her alive, um, and so that that's when I switched to all the protection primaries because she uh, she can get quite tanky. I have her. I mean, I have a hundred k protection on her right now, <laughs> so she becomes a true tank. Relic seven. She is, yeah. Uh, well, I, I have Galactic Legend Ray, and so yeah. she needs to be R7 to get her. Right. Uh, so, I mean, that's where the two the two moddings kind of change. Like, if you don't have Resistance Hero Finn, protection doesn't matter because she's never going to get hit. Uh, the whole point of that team is R2 stealths everybody but BB-8, and so she's under stealth most of the time anyway. And when she's not, she has foresight. So. Who cares how much survivability she has? She's just not getting hit. Yeah. Once you get Finn, he forces the taunt on her, and you need, you know, that's when you need to change how you mod her. Okay, so let me say this. During this time that you were talking, explaining all that, I lost four speed on my Ray, <laughs> but I gained 24% potency. I gained, uh, I think I gained damage on it as well. I gained over 25% critical chance so I think it's a pretty good trade-off. That's so. yeah. Well, so here's and the those trick. Those were mods that were sitting around too. And she's not G12. Right. I've got gold mods sitting there rotting, waiting for her. Yeah. <laughs> so here's uh, and here's here's the math that you do. Let's you, you mod her up, and then you divide by 0.84. Because that, that she gains 16% turn meter. Um, dividing by 0.84 is going to calculate what her effective speed is. Ah. Uh -huh. Uh, so because of the turn meter yeah so you figure out what her effective speed is and that will tell you if she goes next after bb8 gotcha and you know if you have it tuned right um that effective speed is essentially one less than bb8's effective speed which is um uh, i can learn to be divided by 0.84 because bb 8s getting 16 percent turn meter from having r2 and uh, himself in the lineup so you can that's when you start getting to the advanced modding and that that will take a ridiculous speed set on JTR so you can kind of uh, yeah you know uh, you don't need that for the average team that's uh, I, to be honest I don't even have that at, at this point because my my JTR's effective speed is at 333 and most teams don't need JTR to be faster than that. Right. Uh, that's me. <laughs> Mod harder, bro. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, um, so uh, that's how you calculate her effective speed. So if it, you might lose four speed, but then you do the math, and you're like, oh, that doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I can lose four speed, you know? In fact, you... I, I've uh, pulled speed off of JTR. I, I've had her up at like 295 for yeah. a while. And I was like, uh, I, I don't need this. You know, Mine, unfortunately, I haven't. I can't afford because I don't use her, but as a utility to clean up stuff, you see me do yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'm sitting here wondering if I'm going to let you talk me into either of these other Zetas, the uniques. <laughs> yeah. Looking at that insight, it's pretty tight. So, the end of her insights. Turn, that's, yeah, yeah insight is fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people will give the leadership Zeta because you need it. And then people give insight because this is what starts making her the true evasion tank where she gains foresight until she evades. And then when she evades, she recovers health and protection. Like that's, yeah. that's just good. You're Plus, using her on offense. That's, that's good. Um, wow, you just talked me into it. There you go. Uh, the, the strategy, a, a lot of people, you know, you just, you at the beginning you hide everybody but bb8 because bb8's got the zeta that if you whiff on bb8 
he's going to recover health and protection. Right. And then once BB-8's at full health and protection, you switch and you expose JTR and just let like a single character attack her and they will never hit her and you recover the health and protection and you steal a couple of banners back for yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, the crit damage up and the offense up, I can't argue with that. Like, I'm not going to argue with her mm-hmm. hitting harder. Um, but really, it's that foresight and the, the health and protection recovery uh, that's huge. And a lot of people are sticking her on defense now for good reason because she is annoying as hell to take down. Every other hit you're missing on her, <laughs> and she's just recovering health and protection every other turn, and you're like, oh, come on, guys. Um, now, what? let let me talk you into Virtuous Protect. Oh, <laughs> this, is, this is going to be tough. I don't see the benefit right now at my level. Go ahead. All right. So when she suffers a debuff, she has a 40% chance to dispel all debuffs on herself. Now, that's not... Imagine you have a character that's applying three debuffs, right? Yeah. It's a 120% chance she dispels the debuffs. So it, if, if you're going up against characters that are uh, applying multiple debuffs, yeah. she can't be debuffed. She so can't like be able to debuff. Vader, something like that. It suffers a debuff. She has 40% chance to dispel all debuffs on herself. So each one that's added is a percent. So she's pretty much going to cleanse it. Right. And now, the the trick is, if it's Vader lead, obviously, they come back. They come back. But, right. you know, that that's that's just Vader lead. Um, but so, when you start going up against... Does that include the stun from KRU? It does. Really? It does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is, <laughs> you know, quite useful to get around those yeah. KRUs. Um, so... This Zeta, and now as you start to approach endgame again, um, Ray becomes an anti-Vader when she's on defense. Because yeah. the other thing about this ability, it, it's the non-Zeta portion of it. If she's gaining 8% turn meter whenever... Right. Uh, suffers the debuff. Uh, right. Whenever the allies suffer the debuff, right? So... She gets debuff supplied to where, like, say Vader opens up, drops three dots on everybody. Yep. JTR immediately goes. She sheds the speed down that Vader applies. So right. she's not losing any speed. She goes, she applies healing immunity. Every time a resistance ally takes a turn, technically the dot expires and then reapplies, right? Right. Because that, that's how Vader lead goes. Every time a resistance ally takes a turn, that means... She's gaining she's twenty-four. Gaining <laughs> she's gaining sixteen to twenty-four percent turn meter every wow. time, and she just you know she's not getting stuck with debuffs, and wow. she's just destroying. Wow, um, that's crazy. Now, I will say that this Zeta, it's probably my favorite Zeta on her because um, it saves you more times than you can imagine. But it depends how you use her. If you're only using her to take on like a Bosk team. You probably don't need it. I mean, she'll shed the Boba uh, ability, ability block. block. She'll shed yeah. the Django uh, burning. Right. But realistically, once she applies the healing immunity, like she's there against Bosk to apply the healing immunity. Right. And, That's kind yeah. of what I use her for right now, but I'm going to, I like yeah. that other Zeta. I'm going to keep this one in mind because when I start using those counters, I definitely do that. Let me say this, guys. This is the same guy I'm talking to right now that uh, came in and gave me a couple of tricky 3v3 teams that are working for me to this day. So this is a guy I trust. (laughs) Yeah, uh, this uh, JTR, I mean, JTR is the queen at 3v3. She punches up in 5v5, but 3v3. Oh yeah. My God. Um, You know, all those those, uh, people that have started placing uh, Veers, Stark, and one other trooper, usually Piet or you know one other trooper. Yeah. JTR is going to roll. I mean, roll over that team. I guess BBH is going to be the one rolling. Um, but JTR destroys it. <laughs> Just like they don't take a turn. You hand wave Piet. You kill him first, and then the other two uh, troopers are just like, oh, well, there, there goes our team. 
Yeah, she's pretty ridiculous. Like I said, I use her kind of, not quite to the extent, but kind of the extent of Treya and Thrawn as a versatility because mine are lower. Mine are all in yeah. gear 10 and 11. So right. I've, I've, I've invested in other areas, but they do a, uh, she does a really, really good job of punching up 100%. I agree. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, at gear 12, she can beat a lot of, a lot of the relic teams. Relic teams, yeah. She's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely nuts. I mean, at gear 12, she's not beating Padme, but at uh, gear 12, she's beating, you know, all the relic bosks because everyone has the relic boss for that stupid hound's tooth. And, right. right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Everybody's invested in there. I mean, you, you got to. You, you've got it's, to. Yeah. Without yeah. tanks on the other ship squads, it's uh, it's something else. So, anything else you want to wrap up with Solo? Uh, Resistance is probably the most fun team. One of the most fun teams in the game. A lot of people ignore it. But I think so, a lot of it is the ignorance, like myself, of how, yeah. how good they work. So, yeah. Resistance, and JTR specifically, a, a Finn-led team isn't isn't a control team. JTR is the definition of a control team. Yeah. She gets out, she steals your turn meter, she ability blocks the most important person on the team. R2 will come out and hopefully, because you're modding R2 for 100% crit chance too, drop his flames and expose the entire other team. And then every time BB-8 does a wiggle, it steals their turn meter. Every time JTR does special. Every time anybody on that team does a special, you're stealing turn meter, and you start just start cycling turn after turn after turn, and you're getting two turns for like their one turn, and just they just they disappear. Well, I'm they glad you said turn. that about R2 because I did uh, mod R2 for crit, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a plus to that one. <laughs> there's that doing it right, doing it right, right there, doing it right, yeah. and doing it well. Yeah, yes. it's an awesome, awesome team. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much for coming out. You are the man. Make sure you guys check out his stats down below. Go over and see Solo Base. You, you may be familiar with his, as I call him, his life partner with Zareth. So <laughs> they're an ultimate combo coming out of the the uh, Gambit podcast. So, uh, man, can I get a salute to the battalion out there? Solo, good to see you, man. Uh, Always I appreciate good to it see highly. You. you ever need anything from me, you know, you've been there for me from the start. So I highly appreciate you, brother. Of course. Of course. Right, I'm guys. glad. Glad to be here, guys. Yes, Have a good thank one. Thank you, brother. All right, we're out. Thank you so low. Till next time, yes. I'll see you guys next Friday. Actually, I may start posting on Thursdays just before I stream over in that special place that I won't say on YouTube. So those videos might be coming out on Thursdays going forward. But as of right now, it's Thursday night. I'll see you guys. One Battalion Strong. Till next time. Adios. Shut up and sit down.